From nasty, horrific injuries to legends who were once dropped by the UFC, these are the greatest career comebacks in UFC history. Number 5. Rumble Johnson Sadly, Anthony Rumble Johnson passed away in 2022, but he'll be remembered as a truly impressive MMA fighter. Johnson was a very big guy, way too big for a welterweight. Despite this, he insisted on trying to make weight for that division. This led to some poor results both in the octagon and on the scales. Johnson missed weight a number of times and he was eventually cut from the UFC. For not only that, but his below average performances as well. Rumble would have to slowly work his way back to the promotion, winning a lot of fights and setting the record straight. To do this, he needed to capitalize on his size. So he went up to light heavyweight and found great success even at a time when this was one of the hardest weight divisions in the UFC. Johnson even defeated Alexander Gustafsson and earned a title shot against Daniel Cormier. Cormier won the fight, but the fact that Johnson made it that far was crazy, especially for a guy who'd just been cut from the promotion. All in all, Rumble overcame obstacles and adversity and made one hell of a comeback. But few have managed to do it like this guy. Number 4. Dominic Cruz Cruz is a legend of the bantamweight division. He was the UFC's first ever bantamweight champion, a title he successfully defended a number of times. By 2011, Cruz had only been defeated once in his six-year MMA career and was a dominant champion in his weight class. However, Cruz would have to face every athlete's worst nightmare. In 2011, he tore his ACL for the first time, went through multiple surgeries and didn't return until 2014. But Cruz's troubles were far from over. A groin tear postponed his fights again until the end of the year. Cruz fought once in 2014 but then had another tear in his other knee. This time, Cruz was out for another full year. But he's as tough as they come, and in 2016, he got a shot at retaining his bantamweight title. Now keep in mind, in nearly six years, Cruz had only fought once, and nobody knew what to expect. But for Dominic, it was clear he had to win. He went five rounds with TJ Dillashaw, and once again became the UFC bantamweight champion of the world, a true inspiration for injured athletes. I don't know if our next fighter is a great inspiration, but he sure knows how to pull off a comeback. Number 3. John Jones Unlike most people on this list, Jones has never gone through a hard time while actually fighting. Instead, his problems came from outside the octagon, drug testing in particular. He's widely considered to be the greatest MMA fighter of all time. However, it's definitely been a bumpy ride for Jones, who's been suspended no less than three times. After testing positive for cocaine, his public image took a hit, and he was under intense scrutiny. While he was always impressive in the octagon, everybody knew about his wild nightlife, and things were about to get nasty. In April 2015, Jones was involved in a hit and run, and by that, I mean he literally ran out of the car. According to him, he did this because he smelled of alcohol, but it got much worse. It was revealed that the lady who was driving the other car was pregnant. This led to the UFC stripping him of his belt and suspending him for six months. In 2016, Jones was suspended again, this time for a doping violation, making him the first athlete ever to be stripped of a title twice. But that was far from the end of the controversy. In 2017, another doping violation was revealed. But this time, the USADA's suspensions were quite light. The doping violations weren't for serious substances, and the second violation was contested by Jones. Many felt the combination of Jones's hard partying lifestyle and clumsy drug testing would bring about the end of his career, especially after two questionable results against Tiago Santos and Dominic Reyes. But Jones's career was far from over. After defeating basically everyone in the light heavyweight division, Jones decided to move to heavyweight, and after three years of getting his shit together, he returned to the octagon, and only two minutes were enough to defeat the number one ranked Ciro Gan. And now, Jones is definitely hungry for more. So for Jones, the story continues, but for our next fighter, their story nearly ended in a sad and gruesome way. Number 2. Michael Bisping After winning the Ultimate Fighter in 2006, Bisping burst onto the UFC scene, 
winning 12 of his first 16 fights, a truly stunning record for the young fighter. However, all of that changed on one fateful night, when Bisping fought Vitor Belfort. Years later, it was revealed that during that time, Belfort was using PEDs and testosterone replacement therapy, the likely keys to his success. And it's not surprising, when Bisping faced Belfort in 2013, Belfort was a beast. And when one of Belfort's kicks landed straight on Bisping's right eye, this led to a serious injury that nobody would hear about for some time, because Bisping decided not to tell doctors, afraid they wouldn't allow him to fight anymore. Amazingly, Bisping went on to win his next fight, but after that, his performance went way down. He eventually sought help and went under the knife later that year. After his surgery, fans were uncertain if Bisping would be able to keep fighting. His retina was detached, and ever since then, he wears a prosthetic eye to cover his injury. Surprisingly, one year after his fight with Belfort, Michael was back in the octagon. His return was very impressive, and he won four out of his first five fights, even defeating Anderson Silva to earn a title fight against Luke Rockhold. In June 2016, Bisping did the impossible and defeated Luke Rockhold in the first round, becoming the first British fighter to win a title belt. This has to be one of the most inspiring stories ever in the UFC. By now, you've probably guessed who we have in the top spot. Number 1. Robbie Lawler It's been 21 years since ruthless Robbie Lawler made his UFC debut, and there are fighters in the UFC right now who weren't even born when Robbie first joined the promotion. And yet somehow, Robbie's still fighting at a high level. His insane fighting style has given us some of the best MMA fights in history. Throughout his career, Robbie's had plenty of ups and downs, and as some of you might remember, Lawler was actually dropped by the UFC in 2004 after losing two consecutive fights. The first was against Nick Diaz, and the second was against Evan Tanner. Many thought that they'd never hear from Robbie Lawler again, but boy were they wrong. Robbie's one of the toughest, most driven fighters in UFC history, and he wasn't going to let that moment define him. Lawler went through a number of different promotions, ranging from Super Brawl to Icon Sport and Elite XC, but eventually he found his home at Strike Force. Lawler had a very rough time at Strike Force, losing 5 out of 8 fights, and the UFC purchased Strike Force in 2010. By this point, Robbie had been fighting for a very long time and it's fair to say that nobody expected much from Lawler. But he was far from finished. The change to the UFC marked a huge turning point in Robbie's career, and he was eventually dropped from middleweight to welterweight, where he went on to win three consecutive fights. Robbie even landed a title shot against Johnny Hendricks, which went the full five rounds. Hendricks took the win, but Robbie won another three consecutive fights. This earned him yet another title shot, and he faced Hendricks once again, only this time Lawler wasn't taking any prisoners. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Lawler somehow went from being dropped to becoming the UFC welterweight champion of the world. He went on to defend the title in two huge fights, and it may not be the longest title defense ever, but Robbie's title fights against Rory McDonald and Carlos Condit were two of the greatest fights in MMA history. Close, bloody, and violent. Man, watching Lawler will always be a privilege. And there you have it, fight fans. Those were the greatest comebacks in UFC history.